there are simply too many choices in software engineering. You have to choose the type of degree, select your specialization track, and then decide what kind of software engineer you want to even become. Even after you finally landed the job, decisions about programming languages, frameworks, architecture patterns, and design trade-offs will continue throughout your career. Choices, choices, choices. See, options are generally beneficial, but after speaking with so many anxious and confused aspiring software engineers, I'm starting to believe that they may have become counterproductive in this field. This highlights the paradox of choice, where too many options lead to anxiety, decision fatigue, and dissatisfaction instead of freedom and happiness. While more options may seem better, research actually shows that they complicate decision making and reduce fulfillment, resulting in wasted time, missed opportunities, and self-doubt. So what can we do about this? In this video, we will explore three proven decision-making frameworks that will help you make confident, informed, and stress-free choices, whether deciding a career path, evaluating a job offer, or making technical trade-offs. Hey folks, I'm Utsav, a software engineer based in Seattle with over 15 years of experience in big tech and startups. My goal in this channel is to provide mentorship to help you excel in your software engineering career. If that sounds interesting, consider subscribing and connect with me on Instagram, LinkedIn, or any other social media platform where I'll be happy to answer your questions directly. Software engineers generally experience decision fatigue during three phases of their career. When picking a degree or specialization, when making technical decisions in their day-to-day -day work, and when making career decisions like choosing between job roles or job offers. Let's examine each of these to see which decision framework we can apply to make better choices. I recently posted a video about six high-demand software engineering skills for 2025. Most of the comments expressed confusion about deciding which skill path to pursue. And this is likely a dilemma a lot of young software engineers face today. To make this decision easier, I recommend using the Ikigai framework. This framework draws ideas from Japanese philosophy and focuses on finding the intersection between what you love, what you excel at, what the world needs, and what you can be compensated for. It's a holistic approach that helps align your career specialization with personal fulfillment and practical considerations. This is particularly relevant as choosing a study field or career track involves both market demand and your interests. Since it often takes years for your choice to yield its benefit, it can be challenging to gather factual data upfront. For that reason, a non-data-driven framework like this one is a very good fit. Let's look at a hypothetical example. Alex is a college student trying to decide between three career specializations, data science, infrastructure engineering, and front-end development. Here's how he uses the Ikigai framework to evaluate his options. Alex enjoys solving problems and analyzing patterns. He also loves creative design and storytelling and is passionate about creating tools that improve people's lives. These interests align well with the specializations that he's considering. Alex has strong analytical and mathematical skills. He attended several coding boot camps during high school, making him proficient in Python and SQL. This aligns well with data science and his programming skills will also support his work in infrastructure engineering. However, he will require further expertise in algorithms and system design for that role. Additionally, Alex also worked part-time at a design shop, giving him some skills in visual design and beginner level experience with Figma. This experience translates somewhat to front-end development. Market research indicates a growing demand for data-driven decision-making across industries, signaling great potential for data science. There's also high demand for full-stack developers and software engineers, creating ample opportunities throughout the industry. While demand for user-centric design has generally increased, especially in tech, recent advancements in AI have rendered basic front-end and design skills redundant. For data science, the earning potential is high, especially in industries like finance and big tech. The compensation landscape is comparable for software engineering roles as well. However, the earning potential for front-end development is slightly lower on average than the other two fields. So based on these four dimensions, Alex's Ikigai intersection is in data science. He loves problem solving and analyzing patterns. He already possesses analytical and programming skills. There is high market demand for data-driven insights for decision-making, and there is significant earning potential along with long-term job security. Therefore, Alex has decided to pursue a career in data science, focusing on industries that he's passionate about. Another common area for analysis paralysis is day-to-day -day work, where we must choose between various technical trade-offs, especially when starting a new project or creating a new 
product. The first principles framework effectively addresses this scenario by deconstructing complex issues into fundamental truths. This method challenges assumptions, questions beliefs, and focuses on core truths to generate innovative solutions rooted in philosophy and science, particularly Aristotle's emphasis on foundational reasoning. Before we look at an example, if you found this video useful so far, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing for more videos like this. Thanks a lot. All right, back to the example for first principles framework. James is a tech lead in charge of a new project. His team is debating whether to build a product as a monolith or to use microservices architecture. Since both options have their pros and cons, James applies the first principles approach by asking questions to identify his project's fundamental truths. What problem are we solving? What is the first step we need to take before validating market fit for the product? What are the core requirements for this first step? What solution satisfies these core requirements. By working through these questions, his team concludes that they are trying to build a new app that identifies allergies in pets. However, they must build an MVP as a first step to validate the product idea and market fit. The development speed is critical and scalability is not a priority. A monolithic architecture aligns better because it's faster to develop and easier to maintain with a small team. Therefore, despite his initial enthusiasm for microservices, James begins with a monolithic design and plans to reevaluate scalability needs after the MVP. While choosing between career specializations and making design trade-offs on a day-to-day -day basis is a tricky proposition, at least your code reviews don't have to be that complicated. You can cut your code review time and bugs in half by using CodeRabbit, who have also kindly sponsored today's video. See, code reviews are critical but time-consuming. CodeRabbit acts as your AI Copilot providing instant code review comments and potential impacts of every pull request. Beyond just flagging issues, CodeRabbit provides one-click fix suggestions and also lets you define custom code quality rules using AST grep patterns, catching subtle issues that traditional static analysis tools might miss. It also ensures end-to-end -end encryption so that your data is secure and confidential. CodeRabbit is the most installed AI app on GitHub and GitLab. So far, CodeRabbit has reviewed more than 10 million pull requests, is installed on a million repositories, and is used Used by 50,000 open source projects. So if you want to cut down the time and effort it takes to do code reviews, head over to coderabbit.ai and give them a try. Thanks to CodeRabbit for sponsoring this video. Okay, another scenario which we often struggle is deciding between multiple job offers. At least in this case, this is a favorable situation because you can never have too many job offers. Nonetheless, we should still use an appropriate framework to guide our decision rather than choosing solely based on compensation or perceived company prestige or some other random metric. So for a situation like this, you can use the weighted scoring framework, a structured way to evaluate your choices by assigning scores based on criteria that matter to you. Let's look at an example. Sophia is a mid-level software engineer with three job offers from different companies. She wants to make a thoughtful decision by evaluating each offer based on essential factors. To do this, she uses the weighted scoring framework where each factor is assigned a weight based on its importance and each offer is scored for those factors. Sophia considers five factors important to her. The most important is compensation with a weight of 30% due to the high living costs in the Bay Area. The second factor is work-life balance weighted at 25% as she values time with her family, pet, and weekend getaways with her fiance. Career growth opportunity is third at 20%, while important, it's less critical as she's already mid-level software engineer and expects lower progression at this stage. Company culture and hybrid work environment are the last two factors weighted in at 15% and 10% respectively. Although she prefers a vibrant workplace, whether to work on-site or remotely is less important to her. Sophia evaluates each offer on a scale of 1 to 10 for each factor, with 1 being poor and 10 being excellent. And based on her scores, she chooses the offer from company C even though it has the lowest compensation because it provides the highest overall value. These are obviously simplistic examples that illustrate the effectiveness of decision frameworks. There are many more excellent frameworks that you can use based on your situation. For instance, consider the Eisenhower matrix for daily task prioritization, the OODA loop for managing dynamic and uncertain environments, the regret minimization framework for conflicts between your mind and your heart, uh, the SWOT analysis for skill alignment, or career capital framework for developing your most valuable skills. Choices are generally beneficial. However, when they become overwhelming, the best approach is to simplify and detach emotions from decision making. 
Remember that systems and processes provide a greater chance of success than willpower, motivation, and passion alone. Since you know about some very effective decision frameworks now, check out this video I made about the most crucial software engineering skills for 2025 and see if you can apply some of these frameworks to narrow down the path that you'd like to pursue. Or watch this other video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.